In a 2D top-down game, player can often go behind different objects in your game. Here, it goes behind a tree and we can't really see the player. In Unity, we can easily create this X-ray effect using the sprite mask component. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. Here is my 2D farm game project and the most important part before we start is that I'm using the custom axis sorting mode. So I'm using the axis Y to sort my sprites so that they appear in front or uh, behind the other objects in the project. If you are not sure how to set it up, you can check out my how to sort sprites by Y axis in Unity 2D blog post. The link will be in the description. Unity provides us with the sprite mask component which allows us to hide or reveal parts of the sprite which we want to see uh, instead of the whole sprite or the specific sprites uh, based on the mask that we create. To use this functionality in the project we need to go to the hierarchy and we are going to select this plus icon, select 2D objects and we are going to find at the bottom sprite mask. Let's create this and a new sprite mask will be created. By default, in the inspector we can see that the sprite is a spherical mask, you can modify the shape, and in the scene view you will see that it is selected and there is a circle. I will drag it on top of my player and adjust it by modifying its scale, so I will go to the inspector, transform, select scale, select this toggle to enable constraint, uh, and we are going to drag it until the sprite shape, the mask shape will fit the, the player sprite. Okay, so this is enough for the sprite mask. But right now in the scene view, we do not see any difference between what we had previously and what we have now. We need to go to our sprite representing the player. So in my case, I have the agent render object, which has the uh, sprite render component. And here in the middle, we are going to find the mask interaction field, which allows us to select non visible inside and outside the mask. Now we are going to select visible inside the mask, this option allows us to select the sprite which will be only visible when the mask object is on top of it. So now if we select our mask object in the hierarchy and drag it below, you can see that the character is now gone, it is invisible. I'm going to Ctrl Z to reset the position and I'm going to drag the sprite mask into our uh, player object, into the agent object that has the agent renderer as well. Alternatively, you can place the sprite mask component on your player game object. The last step is to select our tree object or the obstacle that we want to use uh, with our mask uh, so that we want to see the player behind this object and we are going to select each sprite renderer and we are going to select mask interaction, select the visible outside the mask. This option will make the tree only visible when the mask is away from this sprite. So now, if we press play, we can walk to the tree that we have modified and we can see the mask on top of it and the mask is showing our player. Now, of course, it has only affected one prefab, so I need to apply it over all the trees in my setup, but that's a start. But the problem here is that even if we go below the tree and we are in front of it, and uh, depending on the sorting order, of course, we are still going to see the mask and that's not what we want. We want to see the player in front of the tree instead of having this mask cut a hole in a tree when we are in front of it. So let's fix that. If you are enjoying this tutorial so far and want to learn more about 2D game development in Unity or about coding in C Sharp, please check out my video courses, the link will be in the description. Okay, so to enable our X-ray vision only when we are behind our tree, first of all we need to select our tree and we are going to add to it a trigger collider. In my case, it is a col uh, capsule collider 2D and I have fitted it to fit the size of my tree prefab and I have set it to be a trigger, which is pretty important so that we do not collide with this collider. With that done, I'm going to select overrides and apply this to all the trees in my scene using the prefab. And now I need to select my player yet again because we are going to select our uh, sprite mask and we need to give it as well a collider. We're going to add a component here. I'm going to select Circle Collider 2D and I'm going to ensure that the collider is a bit smaller than the player so that we do not collide with our trigger on the tree too fast. And I'm going to select uh, this is trigger as well. And to make it work, we're going to create a custom script. 
I have created this sprite mask controller. Let me open it up. Here is our custom code. Now you can find it on my Patreon. The link will be in the description. First of all, we are going to have this required component collider 2D because we are going to use on trigger events to run our custom logic. This will be a mono behavior and we are going to have a reference to the player sprite render. This will be of type sprite render so that we can modify if it is influenced by a sp uh, sprite mask or not. The sprite mask itself needs to be linked to the script. So we have private sprite mask, sprite mask, private collider to the sprite mask collider. Now this is only here because we need to know that we can use the on trigger enter and on trigger exit to the events. And of course we need to make sure that it is a trigger. So we are going to get it in the awake, get component collider 2D, and we're going to set it uh, is trigger to be true. Now in the update method, we are going to do the logic. We are going to work with the list of sprite renders, other renders. We are going to add here in the on trigger enter to the all the colliders or all the sprite renders of the colliders that are triggers. Of course, you can add some additional logic to sort those colliders. But basically, we are going to have in on trigger enter to the if collision is trigger. So if we are colliding with a trigger, if not return. We're going to get the sprite render equals sprite render collision get component sprite render. If the sprite render is not null, it means that it is a valid target to check against our logic. So we're going to call other re renders add the sprite render and checking equals true. Checking is a bull flag. On exit, we're going to have a reverse logic where we are going to remove the sprite render from our list. And obviously, if the list is empty, we want to stop checking, we want to disable the sprite mask, and we want to set the sprite uh, render of the player mask interaction to be none to reset our sprite mask. Now, in the update method, we have all the code that will be run to ensure that we can enable or disable the sprite mask correctly when we are behind an object. Now, we're going to first uh, check if we are checking for the sprite mask uh, if it should be turned on or off. Next, we are going to look for each sprite render in our other renders list. And we are going to check if the object is on the same layer and in front of the player sprite. Now to do that, we are going to have the if statement. If player sprite render sorting layer name is the same as the render from our other renders list. And if the player render sorting order is less or equal to the sorting order of this render from our list. And lastly, we need to check the Y sorting order. So based on the Y position, if the player is uh, Y position of the player is higher than the Y position of the uh, obstacle, the player will be rendered uh, behind. So basically, we are going to check player sprite render transform position Y. If this is greater than the transform position Y of the render from our list, this means that we are behind an object. In this case, we want to set the sprite mask enabled to be true, and we are going to set this player sprite render mask interaction to be visible inside of the mask. That's exactly what we did when we have prepared our sprite mask. Now, in case, uh, we are obviously going to return because we have enabled our sprite mask, so there is no point of checking any other renders from our list. Now, in case we have no more renders and we have no renders that are in front of our player, we are going to disable the mask so that we do not create a cutout circle in our trees. And we are going to set player sprite render mask interaction to be sprite mask interaction dot none. Great. I will select the sprite mask and I will drag here my uh, script sprite mask controller. And what I need to drag here is the player sprite render. So I will assign my agent render here and the sprite mask. So this is on the same component sprite mask and I will be able to see if we are checking for this or not. Also, we can simply disable the sprite mask and set the agent render to be unaffected by the mask. So mask interaction, not. So this is the default state. Let's press play. Okay, so now if we go behind the tree, our sprite mask is enabled. But if we go in front, we are going to stay in front of it and the sprite mask is disabled. So now we have this x-ray effect working and we can go to these two trees and it should work for both of those so we can see the sprite mask. But if we go in front of this, we are not seeing this sprite mask anymore. Great. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to leave a like and see you in the next video.